Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're in my kitchen and we're going to be making my dog treats that are 100% dog approved and tested. I've never had a dog turn these away, even the pickiest of dogs doesn't turn them away. So I want to share it with you. It's not that hard, but it is very time consuming in the baking process. So uh, normally I just throw ingredients in here. So I will advise you to do that once you get the hang of it. I wouldn't measure things, but I'm doing it for you today because I want to make sure that uh, the ingredients, uh, you know, that the that you know how much of each thing to use. So I put in this big bowl four cups of wheat flour. I have three golden retrievers, and so I usually make three or four bowls of this at a time because we go through these so quickly. So um, I'm just telling you, if you buy a five pound bag of a wheat flour, you might just end up uh, making almost all of it in the first round or maybe the second round. But anyway, so you're gonna start out with four cups of wheat flour and this is uh, fine, finely granulated. I live in an area with a lot of Amish and so we have um, stores that have bulk products and um, so our things come in bags like this and this is wheat germ it's it's raw wheat germ and that's how it comes just like that a lot of our products come just like that so I'm gonna put a half a cup of wheat germ in there it's more like three quarters of a cup I guess now that I look at it because this is a two cup measuring cup then I'm going to use some wheat bran and I'm going to use the same amount, three quarters of a cup. Or it could be a cup. It's close, whatever it is. The next thing I'm using is uh, cracked wheat. Now you could, I don't, you don't have to use all these. I'm going to use a cup of these. Um, you don't have to use all these. The reason I use them is they have different textures, like this cracked wheat, it, wheat is crunchier and has more texture in it, and that's why I use it. And the wheat germ is really good for their skin. So, I mean, everything has kind of a, a, everything has a place. Did I put that in? Yeah, I did. Okay, then we're going to put in some bulgur wheat. This is also really crunchy. I'm going to put a cup of that in. Close to a cup. And then lastly, of these products, I'm going to be putting in some uh, flaxseed, and flaxseed's good for them over just overall for their uh, body, and it's a half a cup of flaxseed. Next, I'm going outside of my uh, bulk products. Oh, before I go any further, I like to do this and mix it with my hands because that wheat flour likes to settle to the bottom, and it's harder to mix if you if you let it. So I. At each, like, each stage of this process, I do this so that it's all mixed together. Okay, the next thing I'm going to put in is two cups of oatmeal. And I buy my oatmeal just like at an Aldi's. I don't know if you have an Aldi's, but an Aldi's is kind of um, uh, an inexpensive, no-name, generic kind of store. It's a grocery store that, that has a lot of um, good products, but um, low prices. And that's also where I buy my apple juice. And I use apple juice as my uh, flavoring agent. Now keep in mind, everything in, in my dog treats, uh, they are human food grade. And I don't put anything in it that will give them any kind of problems intestinally. Um, our oldest golden retriever has had problems in the past with the coloring, the food coloring that they put in dog treats. So I make sure that, well, that's really the reason I started making these, and it's why I've continued is that it really has helped her with that. I'm gonna put in a cup of vegetable oil. You can use canola oil. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, use an expensive oil. Um, and you don't need to put the lid back on this because you're gonna be using it again for uh, the, to, um, make your cookie sheet um, oil. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. I've got oatmeal going everywhere. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to put in three large eggs. I 
You might have a little garbage container. Your eggs are, are also good for their hair and, uh, whoops, not the shell. The shell is not a good plan. Maybe it is, I doubt it. I don't want to have them in there anyway. Okay, so we've got our three eggs in there. Now, I, um, at this point, I put in apple juice. I just pour it in because I know how much I like to have in there, but I'm just gonna start with, I'm gonna fill the two cup container completely up with apple juice. I'm sorry if that's out of, no it is in the picture. I'm all excited because I have a new video camera and this is even more exciting. Rich was able to figure out by getting a new, uh, new software program, he figured out our editing problem with the uh, uh, audio not not being present in the first few seconds okay so you have everything in your bowl and this is the part that's either you're going to either enjoy or not enjoy it's not easy to do this with uh, spoons or or whisks or whatever it's much easier to do it with your hands so i just mix the consistency that you're looking for um, I'll tell you at the end if um, if this is right or not because I've never actually measured ingredients, so I'm not sure if I um, if my um, batch at this point is going to be the right consistency. So I might need to add or subtract something, you know, like by adding something else at the end. Your consistency. You don't want it to be really, really wet, but then you don't want it to be really, really dry. And I guess when I put it into the pan, you'll be able to figure it out from the way it looks there. This is looking a little bit wet. But I normally, I think I normally make a bigger batch than that. So let me put in a little bit more. I have, uh, the dogs know when I'm doing this, so everybody surrounds me. They're all around me on the floor. No, you probably can't see that in the picture, but. Okay, let me get a little bit more flour and see if that'll make it dry enough for my taste. Well, not for my taste, but for my liking, I guess, we'll call it. Okay, yeah, that makes it much better. So I added about a half cup more. So then that changes our measurement with our wheat flour. Remember it's wheat flour, not white flour, and it's um, gonna be four and a half cups then in the end. It's gonna be sticky. Your consistency is going to be, it's gonna be, it's gonna stick to your hands like that. Can you see that really well? That's what you're shooting for. You don't want it to be any wetter than that because our goal is to make our biscuits to be a lot like biscotti, and I, I will show you that as we go. But um, right now that is the right consistency. I'll be right back and wash my hands, and I'll be right back. I have um, cookie sheets that are specifically for dog treats, and the reason for that is they're really hard to get up once you put them, uh, once you do this process, and um, the oil, that I put down, it's it, it will stay in your pan. So these pans, I don't use for anything other than dog treats. You, it's not that you couldn't, I just don't because, you know, it's, they're just kind of yucky. I pour oil onto the pan and I start with just a, a dollop and I just rub it around with my hand. This serves two purposes. The first one, obviously, is that it's going to make your pan uh, so that the, the dog treats don't stick to it. But, and this is kind of, the more important part for you it makes it so your hands don't really stick to the batter we'll call it batter when you're making it so or when you're putting it in and you don't want you don't want it to stick to your hand believe me because it's kind of it's kind of sticky and if it's not sticky you did something wrong now all those ingredients i gave you if you can't find them then i would just supplement with more wheat flour so for every ingredient that you don't have just uh, you know that amount. Add more wheat flour or oatmeal because oatmeal is uh, really it's it really adds a lot of bulk to this and makes it nice. Okay, so then what I do is I just dump my entire blob 
anyway. Sometimes you'll have this problem at the bottom where you'll have some unmixed flour and um, you know you're not you're not going for perfect here. I mean maybe you are because maybe you want your dogs to have you know total perfection in dog treats but I never worry about that. I just mix it in as I go. That. Then I just start pressing it down. We are not going to be using any fancy uh, cutters. We're going to strictly be making dog treats in bulk for a lot of big dogs. So we're not trying to, pretty is not our, our, in our game plan because we did, it's just too time consuming. And actually you'll find out that this process itself is pretty time consuming. Your, the cookie tray, or the cookie sheet that I'm using is the bigger one. Um, you know, they come in a couple sizes and this is the bigger of the two, just to give you kind of a, an idea of size wise. And this batch should completely fill your pan almost to the top. You don't have to worry about rising. It doesn't rise. It's just, it is what it is right now. Now this is the, this is one of the time consuming parts of the project. I have to clean that off just a little bit. And that is you're going to take something that's long and um, it can be uh, one of those um, food movers, you know, those great big metal things. Oh, here's one. I might use that instead. I always use a knife, but um, you can use one of these instead. I'll show you how I do it with both. You're, what I do is I, I try to make my dog biscuits about probably, that's probably a half an inch by half an inch or maybe a little bit bigger than that. So you're going to cut the entire length of your pan. Don't skip this step because you'll never ever get dog treats out of this if you do it the way, I'm, the way uh, that I teach you because you end up with like a biscotti. And if you've never had biscotti, it's a very, very, very hard cookie. Well, these are very hard treats, but they're only hard after you do this whole process the way I'm going to show you. So you're going to, you're going to cut this in rows, and you can hear kind of little crunches where the, um, the different, um, I think it's the flaxseed, makes a little crunchy noise. I have looked online for all of the ingredients that I could find and I did not find anything negative about my dog treats. My golden retriever, Aggie, is 14 and a half and she's eaten these all of her life. My uh, lab that passed away at 15 and a half ate them all of her life and neither one of them have ever had any kind of problems from them. So I'm not saying that your dog won't get sick from them, but I've never had my dogs get anything in the line of uh, illnesses from them. And um, we feed our dogs Nutro dog food, and uh, they're, they have really nice fur, and um, I think that it's supposed to be from the Nutro, but I think these contribute to it because the ingredients in it are really good for them and um, make them happy. Okay, now we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna cut um, squares now. You're gonna be baking them at 350 degrees for 90 minutes. And then after that, there's another step. The next step is another time consuming one. And that is you're going to break every one of these up and then you'll put them back in the oven at 275 degrees. And that time you're gonna leave them in the oven for um, hours, probably um, three hours. Uh, I uh, will start out at two hours and then I'll let you know how they're going. Again, that's something that I, I just do. I don't, I haven't really tested to see how long I do them for. But, um, okay, so at this point, here's where we're, we stand. We're going to put them in a 350 degree oven for 90 minutes. At the end of 90 minutes, you're going to want to take them out and let them cool enough that you can handle them with, with your bare hands. And then you're going to tear them apart, every one of these. That's why it was so important that you don't just kind of cut the surface. You have to cut all the way down to the pan. Oh, that's another reason you probably should use the cookie sheet for this because you'll you'll ruin your cookie sheets if they have if they're um, a non-stick. So um, go to your thrift store or go to garage sales to buy these because you're not going to want to ruin them. So then after you've uh, ripped them all apart, 
you put them back, just lay them back in the same pan. You don't have to re-grease the pan. You're just gonna throw them back in the pan. There'll be a big mound. And then you'll put them back in the oven for, we'll start with two hours, and then I'll look at them and decide. But really what you're going for is very, very hard the whole way through. If they're not hard the whole way through, they will mold. And if they are hold the hard the whole way through, then they won't mold. So that's kind of the thing you have to keep in mind. And that's why some people have had problems, I think, making their own dog biscuits because they've had the mold. Okay, so after about 90 minutes, usually it'll pull out like this. Sometimes it'll stick really hard, but other times it'll be your best friend, it'll do that and pull out easily. Then you're just going to take your time and uh, honestly, you want to make sure that this is cool because you'll burn your fingers on it and um, you don't want to do that. So I'm breaking it up into the size that I give. Now these are for my dogs. That up. Whoops. I have a trouble figuring out how this new camera, where I'm at in it. Okay. Um, that's about the size that I do for my dogs. And again, they're golden retrievers, so you, you can make them any size you want, and they're easy to break at this stage, and they should be, like the outer part of them will be a little bit hard, but the inner part will still be soft. This will mold quickly. I'm saying within a week, these will mold, so that's why we do the second round. Plus, the second round of baking really makes them, so they're, they're growling at me because uh, they really want some. Uh, the second round of baking will make them so that they're really good for their teeth too. So let me tell you a little bit more about the recipe. Let's say that you don't have apple juice or you don't know what you want to do as far as um, the wet ingredient. You can use any wet ingredient that you like. You can use, if you like to use beef stock or vegetable stock or uh, beef, um, broth or chicken broth, anything like that you can use. You can also use, I've used pumpkin base, you know, where you take uh, the stuff that you make a pumpkin pie with. I've done that. And um, <clears throat> then use water as my ingredient. If you don't want to put that many calories into it, like pure apple juice, you can always break up using part apple juice and part water. You can really make this however you want to make it. It just, um, it, it's uh, just, is really your imagination that creates the, now see, these are hard. And you might think to yourself, well, geez, those are hard, but that's perfect. No, they have to be harder than this. And, and I'll show you at the end how hard, hard needs to be. My little helpers here are really getting anxious because they know I'm making them and they have to have some right now. And now you know why I go through so many of them because they've already each had three. Uh, anyway, um, I've, <laughs> and here's a cute story about them. We had contractors here one time, and I had a new batch of them, and they were in the pan just kind of like this, and apparently they thought they were cookies, and so, or biscotti, I'm not sure, and so the contractor and his workers had a few, and of course, I mean, it's, they're perfectly fine to eat but you know, they don't have a lot of taste. And so when we got home, he said, I just want to tell you, those cookies you made, they're not very tasty. And I said, those aren't, those aren't cookies, those are dog treats. And then they all had this look like they just ate something that was disgusting. And then I explained that it was nothing that they should have been afraid that they ate. It's perfectly fine. Made me laugh though. No, Bella, you guys have had enough. You're not getting any more, it's all. We'll have more later. Now you know why I make them. I have a big fan base. These are my number one subscribers right here. I've uh, been making these for many years and uh, my sister was up visiting from North Carolina many years ago and I made a batch while she was here and she said, oh, you know, she was gonna make some. She said, it would be a really good idea. You could make them and sell them. And I said, they're too much work to sell. I, you know, I, I love making them for my dogs, but I would never make them and sell them because they're just, 
you know, this part, you can really cut your hands up. And um, I said, no, I'm not, I'm, this is it, I'm, I'm just making it for the dogs. So she decided she was gonna make them for her dogs and then sell them at her local uh, hairdresser. And she made, I don't know how many batches, and that was that, she had enough. Because <laughs> they are a lot of work. Not, I mean, it's not like this is a horribly hard and you end up with a lot when you're done. I mean, you can see how many I have, but I'll show you how many I make at a time so that you know exactly what I do. Okay, you just want to spread them out on your on your um, tray like this, and mine are all broken up. Now you're going to put them in an oven at 275 degrees, and then we'll do two hours, and then we'll come back. But I want, before I do that, I want to show you how many I make at a time. You saw that. Then there's this tray and then there's this tray. This is the smallest amount I will make, is three at a time, because that batch will not even last us, well, it'll probably last us a week. But um, let's see let's see how easily these ones come out. These ones are much wetter. It also depends on what part of your stove that you have each pan in as to how, um, how, uh, I'll call them brown, they get at the beginning. This batch is coming out okay, but it's sticking a little bit. But these are much wetter. And if they're this wet, it doesn't matter. It, you know, they're easier, much easier to pull apart. You're just going to bake them longer with the, um, the next step. Oh, and I want to tell you this about the next step. When you put them in the oven at 275, because they're as moist as they are, and you're putting them in for as long as you are, they're going to be, there's going to be a lot of moisture in the air when you open your oven door. So you want to, you want to really lean back when you open the door because if you're doing more than one, Bella, if you're doing more, more than one tray like I do, um, you, you get a lot of humidity coming out of the oven. So you want to make sure that you don't, um, don't stick your face close to the oven. Okay. So this is after uh, about an hour and a half. No. Yeah. Almost two hours. Do you see how they just uh, pull apart like that? That's not hard enough. I shouldn't be able to do anything with it. It should be so hard that I can't break it at all with my hands or it won't uh, flake apart like this at all. So you're going to put it back in the oven for another hour and try it again. Okay, well, there are a couple ways you can test this, but I'm going to do it this way so that you can see for sure how hard they are. You can see I'm using a mallet and the mallet doesn't do anything to them. And then it, when it crushes it, it crushes it into little pieces because it's so hard. And that's what you want because you want your dog to be able to clean their teeth with it and you don't want it to mold. And if it's not hard, I'm only going to use this term loosely, hard as a rock, um, it's really not going to um, hold up well, it'll mold. So you want to make sure it's really super hard. And it doesn't matter if they get really dark, like this one's pretty dark. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm having trouble with this whole new uh, camera system. Mm, there. Now you can see it. See how dark that is? Um, that's fine. If, they're, if, if you over bake them, that's okay. So I did about another hour today. So the total at 275 was about two and a half hours. And um, so they, they vary in colors from a little bit lighter to a little bit darker. But again, the, the m most important part is hard as a rock. That's how hard they will sound when they are cooked properly. Come on, Bill. Hopefully you can hear that. It kind of sounds like they're eating a rock. If it doesn't sound like that, it's going to mold. You want to make sure it's hard. If you uh, are in doubt, just bake it longer at 275. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And all the information will be below. All the recipe info will be below in the information box. I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And watch more of my dog videos. I love doing them. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.